It's lovely to be here. I hope you had a really good day yesterday. I was just reflecting on the train up that I always really like this conference. I really look forward to coming. And um, as I was drinking my coffee, I was I was thinking about the uh, Rotherham Charter and that first principle of co-production being around welcome and care. And I was just thinking, in challenging times, what an important principle that is for good partnership working. Um, and I always feel really welcome here, and I hope, I hope that you do too. Um, what I'm going to do in this slot is reflect on the journey, if you, in case you missed it, 10 years of parent participation programme, um, and just give you a snapshot of where we are today and a very brief forward view. <clears throat> um, so, um, parent participation is 10. Um, of course, that's not entirely true. Of course, parents worked in partnership with services um, before 2008. And there's some you know, areas that really trailblazed the way, like Cornwall and others. But in 2008, Aiming High for Disabled Children, I think, really set a national ambition around co-production for the first time. And I think we can see that as the mark of a truly national programme of parent carer participation. And that seems like something uh, worth celebrating. In your packs, you have this very shiny report, um, uh, which is our, our annual report, um, but it, it includes a section on 10 years. Um, and, um, and that's where I'm taking this, this timeline from. Um, for those of you uh, not here in, are uh, not involved in um, 2006, you, you may not know that the Aiming High for Disabled Children and the um, approach to parent participation that it introduced was born out of a series of parliamentary hearings um, organised by Contact, which provided a platform for parents to speak truth to power. And from that came For Every Disabled Child Matters campaign, run by Contact, um, CDC and Mencap, and from that came Aiming High. And I guess it's just a reflection looking back that I know in this current climate, some of you experience sort of tensions around campaigning and participation approaches. And I just think it's interesting that at the heart of this story is um, a coming together of those different approaches uh, to achieve change. So, where are we now? A couple of snapshots. So, the network is over 93,000, and that's up. But I think almost more importantly is that second figure. Um, around half, nearly half of that, that, that number um, have taken an action in the last year. So, that might have been completing a survey or turning up to an event. Um, so, you're not just a large network, it's an active one. I think that's important. Um, this year, this is in the report, if you, I'm sure you can't read it, um, it's, in, it's in the report. Um, uh, this year we asked you to report on how you reached out to seldom heard groups. And um, these figures are total numbers. So of the 147 um, forums that responded, um, I, think, I think there's clearly um, a, a way to travel, but I think the numbers look, look here look pretty good, and we see forums reaching out to all sorts of families in very um, different ways. I know we ask you to fill in a lot of information, but I think this, this data is really helpful. It helps us see where, where is a network we might need to reach out. But I think it, I often hear parent care participation, that's about a certain type of parent, isn't it? And I think this kind of data just shows us how diverse that network is and really helps us sort of um, address that myth. So thank you. And then the final element I wanted to pick on was um, engagement levels. So two thirds of you say you have a co-productive or participation based relationship with education. And that's up significantly from last year. Um, you see health and social care are, are, are still a, a bit behind. But alongside that, um, I know 102 forums were involved in the preparation for the joint inspections over the last year. Um, and you've had a range of experiences um, uh, around that process. Um, Contact and NNPCF will be working to ensure that parent involvement is really set up well in the next framework for the next round of inspections that start from uh, 2021. But I'm sure 
we'd all really welcome a recent announcement for a commitment to re-inspect areas that have a written statement of action. I think those start from December. I think that's a, a positive move, and I'm sure you will be um, uh, all involved uh, in that process. That's all I'm going to say on um, participation. But whilst I have you captive, I wanted to give you a little quick update on um, what's happening at Contact. To some of you, we are the annoying people that chase your receipts and get you to fill in loads of forms, um, but we do wider work. And um, I am increasingly really interested in how we can work together with you as forums to work out how we can best support families in your area. We've been talking to some of you about how we might better do that in partnership with you. I'm really grateful for your input and for input from the NNPCF. And if anyone's interested in talking to about us about that further, um, uh, we would love to do so. A couple of highlights. Um, um, wanted to flag in terms of our family support. We all know that for many families, getting support early is, is really important. And working with parents, we've developed a new um, early support programme, which is called Brighter Beginnings. Um, I describe Brighter Beginnings as a bit like an NCT programme for families with disabled children. It's about what you learn, but it's also about the connections that you make. We're delighted to be able to deliver a version of this through some um, Department of Education funding in partnership with CDC and others, but we'll deliver it wherever we can get the funding to do it. And on a similar um, note, I think some of you might be aware of our helpful guide that we published last year um, that is available to families free on our website, but as a forum, if you'd like to give it out, if you can cover the print and postage, um, we, we are happy to send you copies. It's designed to be the sort of keep calm and carry on, the sort of first thing that, that, you, that you read. And then in terms of information, our central information and advice, so that's our helpline online. Delighted to be working again in partnership with CDC, it's a little theme here, um, with support from the department, uh, funding from the Department of Education to continue provide, to provide our central information advice service. There's going to be some developments to that service this year, which we're doing in partnership with parents, largely around the online, so increasing the amount of self-service, um, so enabling parents to access some of the grants databases or um, benefit calculations, do benefit calculations themselves on the site. Um, so we'd really like your feedback on that as we, as we go forward. And working with CDC, we're looking at how the central service can best work with local Sendias services as well which is an exciting development for us. And finally, um, in terms of influencing change, contacts campaigns, it's all about the money for us this year. Um, to, uh, next week, we launch our Counting the Costs report, which is on family finances. It, it doesn't make for great reading, and we are concerned about the rollout of, uh, in, uh, of Universal Credit next summer, and family finances is something that we'll be campaigning on um, ac across the year. And the other aspect around funding, as you know, you will see the impacts of cuts locally. Um, we will continue to campaign as a disabled children's partnership for um, increased funding for health and social care services for disabled children. Um, and we'd like to see that as part of the next comprehensive spending review. So I've got one minute before I need to hand over to the minister. So looking forward. Um, Gail talked already about how we work with, um, that we're working um, with CDC and kids around children and young people's participation. That's really exciting. We want to look at how we can learn um, from each other and we're grateful for continued support from the department um, for that. I'm conscious that, before I close, that this morning's been very upbeat, rightly, but we need to acknowledge, I think, that it is really tough out there. Um, financial pressures put a strain on services, on joint commissioning relationships, and on, on your relationships, your relationships with local authorities and CCGs, and also sometimes your relationships with other parents who are just incredibly frustrated with progress and want better for their son or daughter. And... I just wanted to reflect, really, in closing, that emotions really run high in our world um, because it matters. It, it all desperately matters. And people are more or less skilled in, in communicating that sometimes. Um, 
And that brings me back to that principle of welcome and care that I started with. And I think over the next few years, um, in a challenging environment, we somehow need to keep hold of, and I mean forums, I mean charities, and people at work in this space, we need to keep hold of the ability to be kind to one another and, and kind, to, kind to ourselves. So to finish with a, a final quote from the report, something quite magical happens when people sit down together, talk, listen, work things out. Barriers come down, fear and ignorance flies out the window, and respect and understanding and goodwill takes its place. Um, we're all here because we understand that. We know that if the Children and Family Act reforms are to be realised, it takes financial commitment, but also cultural change. And from Contact's perspective, what we, could, what we see is where good co-production happens, attitudes change, relationships change, and ultimately outcomes improve. It will be a challenging year, um, no doubt, but I think now is the time for all of us, forums, charities, governments, and local decision makers, to be brave, to hold our nerve, and just keep listening to what families tell us that they need to change. So, that, thank you, and I'll hand over to the Minister. Thank you. <laughs>